What's up, guys? It's Impact here, and the Season 2 update has finally come out on Warzone. So I'm going to be taking you guys through the best Warzone settings for Ashika Island and Almazra. Since I've changed these settings, I've been pushing above 200 frames and have very good quality and visibility within the game. And if you want to see what system my game is running on, i got a video on my whole gaming setup right here. For this video, we're going to be going through both the graphics and the control settings, and I've left tabs down below if you guys want to skip ahead to the part that's favorable to you. And also, if you do consider dropping a like on the video, I'd be very appreciative. I'm not going to waste any more of your time. Let's get into the video. Starting off in the graphics settings in the display tab, make sure you have your display mode to full screen exclusive. I know a lot of people like to play on full screen borderless, but you can have the max amount of frames and the least latency in exclusive. The display monitor LG Ultra Gear is what monitor I'm using. Make sure you have the correct monitor that you're playing on selected here. The display adapter is the GPU that you have in your PC. The screen refresh rate refers to your actual gaming monitor. So I have a 164 Hertz gaming monitor and also the display resolution. I have a 1440p monitor. So I have it on 2560 by 1440. If you have a 1080p monitor, you'd be on 1920 by 1080. And also for the dynamic resolution, have that set to off. You're down to the aspect ratio, which I have set automatically. Automatic. Most people are going to be on wide 16 by 9, which is generally most monitors that we're all on. But if you have an ultra wide, it's going to be one of these settings to make sure you have the correct one selected. PC and gameplay and menus, make sure you have to off. Whilst it does reduce screen tear, it is not worth having this on in game. For the custom frame rate limit, some people do set this to unlimited, but I recommend doing it at custom. That way you can set your max amount of frames, 300 being the max in the gameplay custom frame rate limit. And then you can reduce the amount of frames that's used in the menu. So you don't put as much stress on your PC. As for the display gamma, you want to have it on 2.2 if you're on a gaming monitor and 2.4 if you're on a TV. For the brightness, I would recommend anywhere between 52 and 55, just to give you a little bit more brightness in those darker areas in the map. As for HDR, definitely have this off, even if you have an HDR monitor. Over to the quality tab, we'll start off with the render resolution that you always want to have set to 100. And for the upscaling and sharpening, I have Fidelity FX Cast, which will take a slight hit to the performance in order to achieve the best visibility in Warzone, because it pretty much just sharpens up everything in game. Game, and this slider bar just depends on how sharp everything is. I personally like it at 100. You can set it to whatever you want and it will actually not affect the frames any different from zero to 100. For the anti-aliasing, you would never set it to filmic if you're not struggling with frames. But if you are having a problem with frames, you're gonna have to set that to SMAAT2X. That will just give it that more grainy look and it won't look as smooth. Not that big of a deal, but filmic does look a lot better. The anti-aliasing quality will set to normal. And the video memory scale, if you have a really good GPU, you wanna set this down all the way to 50. People think to chuck this all the way up to 90 to reduce the VRAM usage. This actually caused a lot of stutters. If you have an average level GPU, try set this to 70 or even 60. And if you have a really good GPU, set this to 50 and it will dramatically improve the stutters in game. Onto the details and textures and for the resolution, I've set that to low. There's not much difference on the VRAM between the very low and low, but the low does look a lot better. The texture filter anastropic also to low. The nearby level of detail and the distant level of detail are both set to high, simply because I don't want to risk not being able to see someone at range or in close quarters combat because it's very easy to lose track of people. So even though this does take a little bit of a hit to the VRAM, I have it set to high just to minimize the risk of losing vision of someone. But if you have any performance issues, definitely set that to low. It will help that very slight bit. Clutter draw distance is set to blank. The particle quality I've set to low because it's just like thermites and fire, which you don't really need to look good in game. And it will take a hit to your performance if you set it to a, a high setting. Particle quality level on also on very low. Bullet impacts I have on just as a personal preference. I like to see bullets on the wall. Assistant damage layers off. Shader quality low. Tessellation off. And here is a secret setting where I've set terrain memory to max, which will actually give a lot more clarity in game with no hit to your FPS. So definitely worth having that set to max. On demand texture streaming also definitely worth having off. Streaming quality I've actually set to normal because it kind of affects how you see things at distances. It makes it a little bit clearer. It's not a dramatic difference. So it's going to be on preference depending on your performance. I set it to normal because I would prefer to see things at range a little bit clearer. Volumetric quality is something you definitely want to have to low because this has a huge hit to your FPS if you have it on medium or high. This is all the light rays that shine through and in certain parts of the map, you're going to have huge hits to your FPS. Your deferred physics quality and your water caustics, you also want to have off. The water one, massively going to affect your FPS if you're around a river, the ocean or whatever it might be. So definitely have this off. It does not improve you being able to see people in the water at all. So don't think that this is going to improve that experience. Shadow and lighting, the shadow map resolution I have on low. Don't set it to very low because that just looks terrible. So low won't take much of a hit on your FPS, but it'll also look pretty decent. Screen space shadows I actually have off. Spot shadow quality on low. Spot cache, I actually have an ultra, which is funny because it says a, a high effect on the VRAM, but this has been shown to dramatically reduce your stutters in game. So I would have it on ultra or even high. 
Um, the particle lighting on low because it's not that important and also the ambient inclusion off because it just makes these areas of your shadow darker. So it pretty much just nerfs you in game where you can't see people in corners. So those rats that are camping on corners, you're not going to be able to see them properly. Just have that set to off. For the screen space reflections, static reflection quality and weather grid volumes, just have these set to off or low. They're not important. All the post processing effects, I have them all off and set to zero because stuff like film grain and weapon motion blur, world motion blur is just going to make your screen blurry and not be able to see things as clear. Definitely worth having these off. Over to the view tab, start off with the field of view. And I've actually set it to 111 just to be a little bit unique, which I normally have it at 110 because I feel like that's the sweet spot. 120 seems a little bit too zoomed out for me, but it's just personal preference. ADS field of view makes you have to affect it. That way you don't zoom in as much when you ADS and you'll have less visual recoil. The weapon field of view you want to have set to wide. That way your weapon is as small as possible on your screen and not blocking as much on your screen. Third person field of view, I don't even play, but you can just set it to whatever you want. The vehicle field of view I've set to wide also for the same reason with the weapon. For the first person camera movement, you have it set to least so you don't have as much movement of the camera, which is pretty self-explanatory. You want everything to look smooth and clean. Before we get over to the controller settings, we'll go to the interface where there's a couple important things to address. First one being color customization, which is actually a pretty cool thing that you can do. You can customize all of the colors how you like it. Some people like to run the colorblind settings. I personally don't. But one thing that is cool is that you can change the colors of stuff like your ping. And neutral is what you would ping in the distance on the map. So for example, if you want to ping something, this is usually set to white, which you can never see in game. I can definitely see the pink a little bit easier. So I like to have that changed. The next really important thing is the vertical and horizontal heads up display, which is like the HUD where the map will actually be positioned closer or further out of the screen. That's why we have set it to 100 because I want the map and the kill feed and all that stuff to be as far away from the center of the screen so it doesn't block or interfere with anything. Minimap shape should definitely be set to square because you can see more of it. As you can see with the circle, it cuts off these edges so you won't be able to see someone if they ping right there. Minimap rotation I have on, horizontal compass on, crosshairs on, hit marker visuals definitely on. If you play without hit marker visuals, that's crazy. Um, damage based hit markers is very important so you know like when somebody is broken plates or if they have plates still on or whatever it might be. The next important thing is to go over to telemetry and actually turn on the FPS counter, server latency and packer loss. That way it will show up in the top left of your screen. You can show how many frames you actually get in game, what the ping is in game, and if you're having any packet loss. So if the server's having any issues, it will usually show here. It's just a good indicator for you to know. Another really, really important thing is to have parallax effects off. Center dot I also have off. And that's pretty much it for the interface. Now over to the controller settings. If you don't have controller selected, you'll be using your mouse to aim and your left hand on your controller, which just seems ridiculous. Maybe for content, but you'd be an idiot to do so. For the button layout, I use tactical just so I can crouch with my thumbstick and melee with my circle. I've been using that since the OG Modern Warfare 2 days, so I'm just used to it that way. My sensitivity on vertical and horizontal is both set to 8, and I don't have an ADS multiplier. None of these sensitivity multipliers have been changed. The automatic tactical sprint is set on because I've been using that since Warzone 1 very good for having better movement around the map. Equipment and behavior on hold, the weapon mount activation on ADS and melee, which is pretty important because you don't want to enter into a mount every time you ADS. So if you had this set to ADS and you're next to a wall, it would automatically mount. Interact reload behavior, I prioritize interact. That way I can loot really quickly. So I just tap square and it will instantly pick stuff up. It's pretty easy to get used to. And once you do get used to it, it makes looting a whole lot faster. I'm a play behavior. I actually have it set to apply one because I have a back button that I can individually play as I please. But if you don't have a back button like myself, then probably set it to apply all so it's easier to apply all your plays at once whilst you're still moving around and don't have to constantly take your thumb off the thumbstick to hold triangle. Onto the advanced tab, target aim assist on, the aim assist type default and the third person not important, ADS response curve type dynamic, the multiplier on one, the ADS sensitivity transition timing on instant, my custom sensitivity per zoom I have on on, the low zoom and two to three X zoom I have it on one so that way the multiplier doesn't actually affect my iron sights or my two to three X scopes. But when I enter in a four and above X scope, AKA sniper rifles, I have it on 1.1 so I can flick on people a little bit easier. For the input dead zones, I'm gonna explain it pretty clearly so you guys have a better understanding of exactly what it means. You have to think of it on a scale of zero to 100. On zero, the analog stick right now sits at zero. At 100, the analog sticks all the way to the edge of the circle. So that is the scale between zero and 100. So in between that would be 0.5. So in the settings, we have the left stick and right stick min and the left and right stick max, which in simple terms, what it actually does is it allows you to have a little bit of leeway until your actual game will react to your analog stick being in that certain position. So for example, if I set left stick min all the way to 0.75, 
That means I'd have to get the analog stick on the left side 75% across the edge of the circle in order for it to react in game. Hence why we do not want to have this really high. The reason why we have this actually set to 0.05 and not zero is because you'll get stick drift. Everybody who's a controller player knows what stick drift is. So if you see that your aim is slowly just drifting across on your screen or you're moving without actually moving your analog sticks, that's when you need to adjust these settings and find what works for you. As for the left and right trigger, you just have this set to zero so it automatically reacts, but I have digital triggers and bumpers, which is just the same as mouse clicks. So I'm gonna have instant reaction anyways. Gyro aiming, I do not use, so I'm not gonna go through any of these settings. I don't even know who uses gyro aiming. Tactical sprint behavior on single tap sprint. Ground mantle, automatic airborne mantle, and automatic ground mantle, all off. Inverse slide and dive behavior, I have on standard. Plunging underwater, I have set to movement. Parachute auto deploy, definitely have off because it allows you to pull your parachute at the very last second. That way you can reach the ground faster and beat your opponents. Sprinting door bash on. Ledge hang mantle behavior on movement base. This can get really annoying, I'm not gonna lie. Weapon mount movement exit on. Because if you're on a weapon mount and you wanna get off the weapon mount as fast as possible because you get shot at, you just want to be able to move away from it and automatically exit that weapon mount. And you also want this delay on short. This is very important to have on short because if you have it on a long delay, that means by the time you actually get off the weapon mount from when you reacted, long would be a slower response. You want the fastest response possible, of course, so you want this on short. Depleted ammo weapon switch I have off because I don't like it automatically to switch my weapons after I've depleted all the ammo because I do it manually sometimes and sometimes it automatically does it and I manually change it back and then it ends up ruining me in game. So if you get in the habit of just doing it yourself, you'll avoid that issue in game. Quick C4 detonation. I don't know why I have that off. That's meant to be on. That's one thing that's been frustrating me in game and I've been wondering why the C4 hasn't been going off. Ping wheel delay and double tap danger ping delay. Definitely on short because you want your pings to be instant. You don't want any delay from when you actually press the button to when it actually pings. It's just idiotic to even have this setting in the first place and the wheel menu behavior on hold. So hopefully now you maxed out your frames, you got the quality up, the visibility up, and you're feeling good in game with the new controller settings. And if it has helped, please do drop this video a like. It helps the channel a lot. I'd be very appreciative. And if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel. There will be a lot more Warzone content coming soon, so make sure you got the notification bell on. That's all from me. May the COD gods be with you. I'll see you in Ashika Island.